welcome to this explore video now i'm in the beautiful surroundings of derbyshire somewhere between derby somewhere between matlock and today we've come to have a look at this oakhurst house derelict for over 40 years it stood like this in a state of disrepair for all this time going through a period with permission to demolish and then further decline and deterioration so what we're going to do, we're going to see if we could have a look around inside, take a few pictures, talk about it a little bit, and hopefully get out again. See you inside. Built in 1848 to the architectural style of arts and crafts and Jacobean, it was originally a forge house until 1859 when all forge works ceased. The forge in the house appeared to have remained totally vacant until around about 1876 when it was purchased by a gentleman called Richard Johnson who owned a company in Manchester and a wire works was then established on the site. Later in 1888 the house was purchased by the Midland Railway Company and was extended for the chief engineer. A few years later in 1893 the house was purchased by the owner of the current forge and it was extended even further in 1894 given the arts and crafts style for which it is best known locally today. In later years in post-war Britain, Oakhurst House was then divided into 12 individual flats. These were occupied on and off for that period up until the mid-1970s when the deteriorating condition of the building and an increase in better and more local council housing, the residents found alternative accommodation. Since then, the house has remained unoccupied and is completely derelict. The image that we're looking at here shows the original white door 1848 entrance. In the center is the 1888 extension and also the 1894 extension towards the end. So looking at it, there was clearly three floors. So we've got a fireplace there, is that? And some kind of like oven or stove. There's a window and then further up, it appears to what is a, a third floor. Can you just make out that chimney stack at the top? That is absolutely beautiful. Okay, let's see about going into the next room. Oh, duck down. Wow, look at that. That is amazing. Let's see if we can get in. Just total ruins. Now this room only appears to have been two stories high. Again, you've got the chimney breast column just there, going up to a chimney stack with pots present at the top, even the TV aerial. We've got this lovely window frame. Must have been such a beautiful view at one time for whoever lived on these premises. So that's the door we've just come from. So I think that's the door we'll go through. Right. So through here. Now look at the angle of these bricks. Would there have been a staircase here at some point? Obviously that layer of bricks ain't wide enough, but Look at that, look at that stonework up there and again another chimney and the chimney stacks are on like slanted angles. In the same room still, we've got this huge bay window, again it must have been a lovely view. And what was probably a bedroom above and a fireplace for such bedroom. So let's turn back and we'll have a little look to see what might be in this bit. very very small room another opening there another window so clearly two floors again another chimney it looks very precarious and we can head off down towards this window and carefully have a look through what was probably a, a little storage room another little window just there Right, let's go back to where we came from 
through this little bit. So that's the way we originally started from. So we've got this to look at. What we're gonna find is peculiar opening in this wall. So we're gonna have to climb up there and well, there's no way through there. But look at that. And look how high that is. Absolutely astounding. It's like a small tower. Okay. Let's venture down here a little way. Very, very rocky. Old water pipe there, maybe. That bathtub over there, look. Wonder how many floors that's fell. Unsure what that would have been. So there's a little room down there, it looks a bit slippy and dangerous to get down. So instead, we'll climb over. And look at that. Look at that in there. There's even a little door in there. I wish we could see it, but between that black gap, there's a little, what looks like a bedroom door. That's brilliant. Right. Yeah, let's go through here. Got another bath. So look at this. You can see that tall towery area from a different angle here. All right, let's get the torch out and have a little look. So there's nothing, nothing in here as such. There's a few of these little doorways. Let's have a little. So, some kind of stove. Let's see if I can widen the lens up a little bit. There we go, that's better. Yeah, some kind of stove. Let's have a walk through this end. We've come out at the end of what may have been some kind of courtyard with a single loft area above it. There's also another little passage just here. It's like a maze. Oh wow, look at that. Really not sure what that is. Like an old washing machine of some kind. Or a tumble dryer, I'm not sure. Hmm. Okay. Next room. So a few more rooms.
to the house construction as it is in now was completed in 1848 went through a few various ownerships and it stayed occupied up until the 1970s in the deteriorating condition it was just left to become derelict and in 1994 permission was granted to demolish the house as it was you know it's definitely beyond repair and it really is now However, the um, permission to demolish the property has now expired and the Wireworks estate was purchased in 2000 and that is still being used as storage with various other buildings that we saw at the beginning of this film. So this will continue to stand as long as nobody comes along to demolish it or until it just falls down itself. What a beautiful house with a sad, sad ending.